Hey, welcome to the hobby shop. I'm Philip. Don. I'm Rob. And we have a special guest today. Michael. Uh, today we're going to be talking about hobbies. And one hobby that seems to connect the four of us, well, more three of you, but still close enough, is trading card games like uh, Magic the Gathering. Uh, pretty much. It's... I think one of our only really linked hobbies, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we always come here every Friday. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I get here like Saturday and Sundays. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like all hobbies, it's a hole in the wallet and very expensive. Yeah, it's. It could be one of those hobbies that just eats your wallet. I think most hobbies eat your wallet. Okay, well, some people have hobbies like, uh, you know, bird fishing. watching. Hey, even fishing costs money. Well, yeah. They're cheap. Those rods are not cheap. You think they're not cheap, but uh, like if you already have one, then it's like all you have to do is pay for worms. Well, no, not even that. You have to get a fishing license now, so you're right. Okay, so yeah, that's also... That's 30 bucks right there. Yeah, see? Hobbies. Okay, never mind. Hobbies are going to cost I'm sure there's a, a hobby somewhere that's like affordable. I'm sure there's something somewhere. I don't know. Uh, Coin you, collecting? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Drawing. Cost gas. Drawing costs paper. Pencils. Especially the good kind of pencils. Those aren't cheap either. They're like three bucks. I'm trying to talk a about pack those. of no, pencils. No, no, I'm not talking about real regular ass pencils. I'm talking about those grade A pencils where you get those nice little charcoal lines. I've drawn for. 15 years and I've never once used any of those. I always use just a plain old pencil. And you don't understand. I don't, I'm, I'm not a real artist then. Fuck, I don't even count myself as an artist anyway. I haven't drawn in like a year and a half. Uh, but yeah, the one hobby that seems to link a lot of, um, most of us here is uh, Magic the Gathering. So I'm kind of just kind of like, throw it to you guys and you guys can take it from there. Um, what drew you to uh, Magic the Gathering in the first place? Well, I'm gonna let you two start because I'm pretty sure you guys are more interesting. And Robert, uh, can you screw yeah. that? Um, a little more than that. <laughs> they can perfectly up. hear me. Yeah, it's okay. picking them up just fine. Yeah. It's actually picking them up more than they did you. Oh, wow, okay, never mind then. Yeah, um, Mainly, I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was in, like, elementary school, like, second grade. And then I came here and saw a bunch of people playing Magic, so I decided to, you know, just try it, give it a try. And I liked it more, so went into the deck. What about you, Michael? Well, mine's almost the same story as Rob, yeah. except I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in high school. And yeah. then I had friends who kept on asking me if I played magic, so, and I said, no, will you teach me? They said, yeah, we'll teach you. So, so just, that's when I started playing magic. So apparently Yu-Gi-Oh! is a gateway drug into <laughs> yeah, a card shop hobby. I'm sure apparently. some people started with Pokemon or something, but yeah, I agree. pretty much. It seems like, the, you know, every time I ask people, like, oh, what, what got you into magic? Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, I guess it's just a gateway drug then. Yeah, it's just... It seems to be that thing that got really popular and it was people's gateway into trading card games. What about you? It's uh, pretty similar to them, but uh, I got in due to uh, my two friends because they, they play both UVR and Magic. And they always talk about FNMs and stuff like that. And I was like, well, actually, no, there weren't really FNMs during the time. That was tied too. Yeah. That was way before that. And I was just seeing like a whole bunch of people playing and having fun and it looked really interesting. And when I first got into it, I didn't know how to fucking play it. It's uh, like the worst feeling. It's like, oh look, I'm new at this. And, and I suck horrendously. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna play this. What's mana? Oh. It, it, it has to be a thing you stick with. And that's probably why I suck at magic, because I haven't stuck with it. Yeah, because it, it's definitely, and talk about it's one of the actually hardest card games to get into also. Uh, I'd actually, ne well, yeah, I actually do want to say now because it, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, I'm usually shocked to hear how much how much some, some of these cards cost. 
And I mean, you're sitting here probably thinking to yourself, like, oh, you know, it's a card game, it's cardboard. How much is it going to cost you? You're looking around, like, to have a decent around deck, $300. God, boy. Just, just to lay down, casually. That's, like, That's insane. to play, like, on a casual, competitive level. Oh, uh, I guess, uh, what I'm trying to ask is, why wouldn't people just trade, but, uh, if you really want to get something, like, if there's something particular you want, you go and buy it. Yeah, because usually when you trade, it depends on your community. It depends how stable, how strong, and depending on whether or not people rip each other off. Yeah, it depends on who it is. It's a level of trust, knowledge, and knowledge. I think everybody has that one person that they will not trade with because they... Because everyone tells them, like, hey, you see that fucker over there? Yeah. You don't trade with him. Don't trade with him. He's an asshole. Don't rip uh, him off. And I think that that's in any tradable game. Yeah, uh, that one guy who tried to jip you. Try to act all casual, and he's the businessman. Uh, now, I really didn't get into Magic. I've played a few games of Magic. I have my own deck and all that. It, you know, bare basic deck. But, um, I, no, I've always been more of a Yu-Gi-Oh player. And um, I even got back into Yu-Gi-Oh in the last couple of years. I want to say the last two years I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh after, like, five years of not playing it. Which... When you go five years without playing a game and try to jump back into it, it's like insane how much the game the game changes. Yeah, that's what I did with Magic. I quit for seven years and I got back into it, and I was just like, "Well, it, I guess it's, it's not like it changed one hundred percent the rulings and all that." Well, Actually, I mean, yeah, yeah, the rulings, the rulings did, did change. change. Yeah, but the concept of it did change. Concept of it, it didn't change a whole lot to where you're just like, I don't know what's going on anymore. I mean, some of the rule bases did Well, change. yeah, it, it, like, it took me a while to get used to it again, but it only took, like, two weeks. Yeah, it's not like, oh my god, everything's changed, it's almost like a no game. No. No. No, uh, yu gi -Oh is pretty much the same, same way. And concept is still the same, it's just, cards have complete. some cards have just completely changed the way you play. Yeah. Um, and, I don't, and again, I don't know... All the similarities between Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic, I like. For all I know, there might not be any similarities. <coughs> but there's some cards, like the whole concept of using a polymerization card to fuse your monsters. That's like a novel concept now. Hell, me me sacrificing two monsters to bring out a bigger monster. Um, like, how how long was it since you saw that? Where somebody actually just traditionally. Sacrificed and summoned the monster. Yeah, where you have to that was, that was actually yesterday whenever I played you, remember? Yeah, that's what I'm talking yep. about before that, though. It's been so long since I've seen that. About the tree eating? Or yeah, the bigger stars? Yeah, because yeah. it's all about uh, special summoning, right? Yeah, it's special summons now. Yeah, um, it's hmm. like there's always like some kind of. And you were, you were saying this that there's. Like, uh, it seems like everybody just has a card that special summons another card and. That card special summons this card with this effect, and you know, it's kind of completely crazy. With it that just stuff. goes dominoes. It's, it's, yeah. 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 Just, and then you get one turn kills just right off the bat. I mean, AJ. Uh, it, it's not even a game anymore. It's just how who fast has, can I. Who has the better deck? Yeah, actually. basically. Who, yeah. Uh, it's, it's unbalanced as fuck. It's. Uh, I don't know. It. Ha, they've tried to make the game more balanced, right? They've tried, I think, but I mean, you would have to kind of overhaul the entire game, really, to yeah. really level it out. It sounds like they need to cut special summoning just completely. Well, you, they don't have to cut it out. Just nerf it. it, it yeah, just kind of tone back on it. Just less. I just think there's too many cards where it's all about special summoning. It, you can still have it, just tone it down a little bit. I mean, turn one kill, I mean, yeah, that's in Magic, but that's in, like, Legacy. And no, that's not even Legacy, that's, like, Vintage. Oh, yeah, that's around, like, Vintage. Where that's where you have to have, like, a deck that's, like, $20,000. Uh, um, you, you can't do that in Magic in Standard. Uh, and just just imagine the uh, fucking collectors. Yeah. I've come the collector across, hobbies. I've come across <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh collectors, and they are insane. When it comes to cards, like, uh, it's, 
I don't know, I don't want to say it's too weird because I've seen this kind of stuff before. I'm like toy collectors. I've I've met I've talked to toy collectors before who uh, they're like obsessed with getting like this particular version of this car. Of like this a figure, yeah. Figure, and I've seen people like. You had like alternate versions of like uh, Elemental Hero Sparkman and stuff like that. Yeah, they were. Yeah. They're not alternate arcs. Yeah, I've seen. I've met some people who were like so hardcore in the Yu-Gi-Oh. They had to find that one particular version of the card. Yeah, and, and, th and then it had to be a certain rarity. Yeah, I still don't know what constitutes what level of rarity. It's how shiny the card is. How shiny, like um. If the full card is really shiny, that's that's how rare it is. That's my problem with okay. Yu-Gi-Oh. It just blinds you whenever you open up a page. <laughs> you're just like, oh, what is this stuff? Oh, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. That's right, my eyes. <laughs> there goes my eyesight. Just, just blinds you. Uh, now, I think Yu-Gi-Oh gets kind of a bad rap for being a kid's card game. Because it's little... Like, you look at the cards. They're obviously more cartoony looking than Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you look at the old Magic Gathering cards, they look like fucking Play-Doh. Whoa, that was 1995. Yeah, I know. I know, but I'm still saying, or, like, well, come on. No, 1993. Well, Adults still play with that. People associate Yu-Gi-Oh! with kids, mostly because of the cartoon, and, or anime, or whatever the hell it was. Uh, most people associate it with kids because of the cartoon, uh, and because it has more of a cartoon meaning look to it. I mean, well, the car, they kids are. kids play Magic Gathering too. I don't want to hear it. I'm just saying, people associate it with kids. People associate a lot of stuff with kids. Before you know it, people associate guns with kids. Oh, guns are for kids now. <laughs> okay, well... Are guns a hobby yet? <laughs> it is, actually. Yeah, it, it yeah, is. I mean, Apparently it is. They're gun collectors. Basically, if it's a thing, they're collectors of it. Mm -hmm. And they turn it into well, I mean, a You don't have to collect it, you know, gun range shooting, stuff like that. That's a hobby, yeah, too. Um, and that's an expensive fucking hobby. That's so, an expensive yeah. hobby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, I think it would really suck, you know, to have an, an, AR, an AR that gets banned. Uh, yeah. I think that, that really sucks. Uh, sp speaking of the gun thing. That's kind of what my cousin's really into. He's uh, all into uh, uh, collecting guns and stuff like that. That's his his thing. Um, but he's not like insane about it. He uh, he I, I don't even know his great. He knows so much about guns. It just kind of blows my mind because I have yeah. No those people of it. who are like, oh yeah, I know the concept of guns and stuff like that. And every time we see movies, yeah, I don't load. I mean, it won't shoot that long, and it's only three seconds. They know how long. He's like that. They know how long, how much the clip is, how fast it shoots, how much it shoots, how long it shoots. The kind of model it is, yeah, what it's made out of, all that stuff, and where it's made. It's just like he now he has a shit taste in movies. Let's just say that right now. <laughs> but he was watching uh, Resident Evil Two, whatever, whatever the second movie was called, uh, Apocalypse or something. Um, and he was complaining about this guy having golden guns. It was like, if they're made out of gold, they wouldn't fire, or something like that. Uh, it's, uh, uh no, no. Artistic. I, I, I told him it's golden plated. It's go golden plated. That's how it fires. There you go. But he was so mad over this. And it's funny because he loves that movie. I, I know. Uh. I, like I said, <laughs> shit taste in movies. He thinks Transformers 3 is awesome. Um... I think keep on he was like See people have 14, hobbies of certain like interests. Some people like to have hobbies of watching bad movies. Uh, no, he does he plays are good. Well, if in his concept in his world and he believes well, that they're I mean, good, then they're okay. good in his now, world. I have a hobby of watching bad movies. I'm the one who watches crap and I know it's crap. I watch fucking Troll Two. Troll Two, uh Plan Nine from Outer Space. I um I'm addicted to uh B movies. Uh, Becca mentioned that before. Yeah. Um, some people, like, I've been watching car auctions for the last couple of days. For, I'm really not sure why. But people who are, like, really, really into cars, they can spot, like, they can see a car, like, in the corner of their eye. They know the model. They know the year. So it's they, like the gun sign act. They just, yeah. they clicks right off the bat. They know what it is. They know where it's at. And I think that's actually pretty interesting, you know, a lot of people can learn from collectors. As much as people sit there and want to say the knowledge is useless, it's still interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I make fun I make fun of some of these characters being insane, but it's they just have a real passion for their for their hobby. Uh, now, with I want to say this, this just this about Yu Gi Oh real quick. Um, how it's not really talking about about Yu Gi Oh, but what is the differences between Yu Gi Oh and Magic? Uh, I. I is it like by a lot? Is it in concept similar? Well, I haven't played, I haven't played Yu Gi Oh yeah, since uh, 2002. Like, so. I remember the last pack, I think, was the one with the mask or the one with the feral cool it, it looking was, thing. It was like tight. It was like the second one to ever come out. Second generation? Yeah, second second generation. Gener yeah, it was second generation. I remember we just, quit like I immediately. I remember quitting when it was the mask stuff and so, the final. So it was around like there. So you guys quit about like 2003-ish? Around, around yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I've talked to a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players and that seems to be when a lot of them got out of it. Um, what about you? Do you? Like, I don't, I'm really not sure, I really don't know. You're both Yu-Gi-Oh player and a Magic player, right? Yeah. Uh, from, in your opinion, what what is like the, like, the differences. Uh, I don't know how to put this in. Just the mature audience. No. <laughs> uh, I'll say resources. Yeah, uh, resources because Yu-Gi-Oh! you're limited to a deck, yeah. but with Magic you have to have at least 60 cards in a deck and you have to be able to shuffle it on your own. Okay. So you can have, with Magic you can have, as long as you have 60 cards and you can shuffle it on your own, you're fine with your deck. But with Yu-Gi-Oh, you're only limited to 40 to 60 cards, so... Uh, no, I didn't know that. I didn't know uh, Yu-Gi-Oh had a 60 card limit. I've never gone over 50, so... And I, I didn't even know that. Um, now, the concept of mana, that's the one thing I've noticed the difference, the biggest difference between is... Don't you need mana to the play... To cast your spells, yes. Okay, I wasn't sure if you needed mana to play creatures or, or monsters or whatever. The any any spell game. in the game that has a uh, a symbol to the side of it, and it's like a sorcery, instant, or creature, or enchantment, like any one of those kind of spells. Or interrupt. Yeah. But, <laughs> it's like old. But those are your spells, and you have to have certain mana to cast those spells. Okay, um... You're basically just playing connected dots. Oh, okay. It's like, okay, this one goes with this one, this one goes with this one. And it also depends on your land base and yeah. color. Or and you can only spend your mana once that turn until your next turn, then it untaps. Well, also the difference between two is the rulings and the very, very complications. I'm pretty sure you could probably get complicated too. I'm not really 100% sure because uh, I haven't played it. It, it can get complicating. It just depends on how... It depends on how complicated you want to make it. Well, magic gets sort of complicated just by specific words and... Uh, if it has a comma, it means a whole different thing than you think. Yeah. And then there's certain, like, creatures that have certain abilities like regenerate. That's one of the most hardest things to work around, is regeneration. Because if you let damage happen and you didn't regenerate the creature and then you now pay the damage, because damage used to be on the stack and you would let damage happen and then you would do regeneration. You not use the stack anymore. Uh, um, your creature would die. Now, is this still, is, um, I think they called it haze or something yeah, like haze. that. Is that still a thing? Yes. Um, that was one of the. The first things I noticed playing Magic was uh, was Haze, where, and I, I, I'm probably remembering this wrong, but basically you only, like, you couldn't attack immediately or something yeah, like that? Yeah, your creatures that have a summoning sickness if, unless they have haste. Unless they had haste. Yes. They, okay. Then the creature could come in. Then so attack. it's the other way around. I, yeah. think, I thought haste was what prevented them from attacking. No. No. Whereas then with Yu-Gi-Oh, you don't have to have summoning sickness with Yu-Gi-Oh for haste. It's just you play it and then in your battle phase you can attack with it. Yeah. That and another big difference between Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic is instances. So they have to so instances allows 
the other player to play spells during, like, say it's your turn, but the other player can still play spells well, I mean, on your turn. Well, I mean, traps work that way, too. Yeah, but they had to play a certain card for it to interact. Yeah. Where they can just do a cast a spell on your turn anytime, so they had to create a stack to where uh, cards uh, happen. So say, like, I cast a creature, so it's coming onto a stack, so the spell hasn't resolved yet. And then they cast like an instant spell, like a counter. It'll counter that card before it comes into play, so it never uh, entered the battlefield. But their mana was spent to cast that card, so they don't get to use that anymore. Uh, um, we'll get back to magic in a second. I just wanted to ask this: Is War not Warhammer? Is Warcraft still a, still a card game? No, uh, Warcraft is Overlord. Uh, there's some other stuff. I think I have quite a bit of card games here, but those, those are the other two that I got into. And uh, as much as it does make it a little sad that Warcraft, well, it got discontinued and is now on, online as uh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone. But the one thing I did really miss about it is the raids. Oh, wait, so wait, Hearthstone used to be... Uh, no, Hearthstone is online. It's where it technically went to, but they changed the ruling and changed the game completely into a different format. Okay, uh, I just remember seeing a playthrough of that, and I had no idea the two were connected. Yeah, they're connected in some sense. Some cards have similarities, but not 100%. They have some rulings, but a lot of it really changed compared to what it was. Uh, no, that was a game I never... Like, like uh, Magic was... I always what prevents me from really getting like really into magic is to me it's complicated. Like it, it seems to be uh, unnecessarily well, complicated. Well, I think the thing in watch magic is the easier way to get into. I wouldn't say going straight into F and M's at times because that can cost you some money. I think uh, most people get in through multiplayer and a casual play. A yeah. lot of people like actually come in, and stuff like come in that. very casually, and commanders are pretty you know pretty penny too. Yeah, depending on the level. The competitive commanders who want to blow a fuck ton of money on a competitive commander deck when it's just multiplayer. You know, it's all for fun. Well, technically, all hobbies are for fun. It's when people put in the more competitive sense of trying to turn a hobby into a job is where it changes. Now, this is where I now I need to be honest here. Uh, when I first started to come to the heart of the cards, when I first came here, I had that preconception in my head that. Uh, people who may play Magic Gathering, you know, I was thinking, you know, D and D geeks and stuff like that. I was thinking the, you know, the pasty nerd in their mother's basement. That's why I, oh, I thought type. it was, but that was because I was like, you know, I think it started coming here. I was like sixteen when I started coming here. I was like fifteen or sixteen when I started coming here. Um, so, you know, watching people play it and all that, I realized that you know it's. Not like that, and you know, same way with D and D. I mean, you get different variations. D and D, you know, the group that usually comes in, you know, they all have jobs. They're all adults. They look yeah. like normal people that you see every day. Yeah. And you know, uh, Magic. I remember going to a tournament, and there was this big muscular dude, and I was like, "You gotta be fucking kidding me! You're fucking intimidating, and you're playing a card game." Yeah, uh, I can't remember his name, but there's this uh, MMA fighter who was like uh, this famous M MMA fighter who was like really hardcore in the Magic. Uh, and it's like hearing that is just like wow it just you know it, it's time. like you know <coughs> stereotypes are there but in literal sense they're not there's different shades of people who play different things because it's a hobby and it's an interest you yeah. always meet different kinds um, of people and it's just annoying when media throw this out because like you said you get this pre-assumption this is what you're going to see and this is what you expect yeah. That's why, that probably explains my hatred for shows like Big Bang Theory and uh, Comic Geeks or whatever that show on AMC is with Kevin Smith. Um, comic Book Man, that's it. Um, it's just because it's perpetuating these stereotypes that, for the most part, aren't true. I'm sure, I'm sure some of they, these stereotypes come from some. They but. have small truth in small ways, but they're not 100% true. It's mocking what they've seen in the concept of what the media see as it. Yeah. It has some truth, but it's not the whole truth. Now, the reason why Yu-Gi-Oh! was like the thing that I think a lot of people got into was because it's just, for a little while, everybody was into it. it I don't think it was, it was never the cool thing, but 
No, no, the cool, so the cool many kids people. didn't play it, but the semi cool kids played it. Yeah, um, there was this just this big boom in Yu-Gi-Oh where everybody. I remember in, I was in middle school. Every every kid was playing it. Um, well, I mean, you know, you saw the anime and people would talk about the anime, and you know, it was the Pokemon boom. It was yeah. just like that, you know. As soon as it popped, everyone talked about well, it. Well, I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh you, was as big as Pokemon, yeah. but it. Because it didn't look adorable, that's why. That's where they fucked up. You both have adorable little uh, monsters kicking the shit. Cute. That's one thing. You gotta have uh, yeah, a bunch of little line. cute creatures beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> uh, that's yes, how you make money. That, that's the appeal of Pokemon. Cute little creatures beating the shit out of each other. Exactly. Um, at least they never made a uh, freaking, freaking po- uh, Yu-Gi-Oh tampons. Pokemon tampons are a real thing. Yeah. They were made. Uh, bet you didn't know that, did you? I did. Fucking Pokemon collectors are probably going crazy for those. It just... <laughs> Wouldn't doubt it, Don. It just... Ugh. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I remember in middle school, everybody was playing it. Uh, in high school, uh, my a few of my friends uh, started up a uh, school-wide tournament. Now... I'm guessing a lot of the rules they came up with probably came from the cartoon. And I remember nobody knowing how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. I think that's also the funny, Don't. funny concept of Yu-Gi-Oh. You have the one people who know how to play that one person who comes like, I know how to play, and you go into these little non-competitive tournaments, and there are you know, people having fun, they're just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm going to play this. It, I'm going to play this, and I don't know what I'm doing. But here's the thing. Even if these weren't the official rules, the way these guys handled it, they handled it professionally. Like, they had, like, okay, these are our set rules. Like basically, they had their tournament rules, so nobody was confused. Because um, any other tournament that, like, I ran a tournament, and it always ran in, it, we always ran into arguments. Because nobody knew how to play. Hell, we got in this long, I got in this long argument over life points with somebody. It's like, it's 8,000 life points. And... There's one guy saying 2,000, one guy saying 5,000, one guy saying 4,000. Nobody could decide on this. And I don't know. Um, I can't remember. What did the... Like, the cartoon went by what, if anybody knows? The cartoon started out at 2,000, and then it increased to 4,000. Okay, so that's where the 2,000, 4,000 thing came from. Yeah. I don't know where the fuck that one guy got 5,000. I have no idea. Uh, the, it's just, the show didn't follow the concept of the game at all. It was yeah. just like, uh... I think what? by the second season, they tried to be more like the actual game. It would make sense, considering the show was a vehicle for the game. Um, you know, it was to get kids to play it. You would think it would actually... Teach them. I come up on rule books, but kids don't read. Come on. Yeah, that was the... If people would have just read the handbook, they would have known the rules. That's how I knew the rules. Yep, that little handbook that comes with a tin. But nobody fucking reads. No, nobody reads anymore. Especially now. Especially with things like Audible, but best books. But anyway. Um, That's one of my hobbies. I like reading. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> hey. Nerd! Hey, I like reading too. I just don't read as much as probably Rob. My, my sister is a real bookworm. Again, another hobby that's going to cost you money. I don't think as much as it does now. With online no. reading, not really. Yeah. Like, I, I'll be honest, I don't read that whole lot. I don't read a whole lot. Um, You're a very sad, sad little man. Although I can't talk because I don't read either. I'm a little But no, I, I listen to audiobooks because I make. Oh, you're lazy. No, no, it's just I can get more out of it from hearing it than reading it. I know that sounds stupid, but it's just that's sometimes I'll forget a story as soon as I'm done reading it. But if I hear it, I remember it. I don't know why. Uh, and keep in mind, I was one of those kids that they suspected was dyslexic. Uh, well, that's when they throw dyslexic. fucking everything around. Oh my god, I remember that fucking bullshit. You have dyslexia, R A D D. Um, I actually take knew, our medicine. Take this Ritalin. Well, I actually knew somebody who really was, uh, um, really had. Um, I can't remember the word I just used. 
dyslexic? Dyslexic, yeah. I, I knew somebody who was actually dyslexic. Like, he really could not. It's not that you can't read. It's just, it's hard. It's like words you jumble, jumble. You jumble the yeah. words. Yeah. They, Which is, they lose their place a lot where they're at. Um, and as sad as this is, is really, I want to know the read because of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, it took, I, I learned how to read later than most people did. Um, but it's, Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of what made it to where I actually could read. Because I would, you know, you have to read the cards and all that. You have to read, well. That little tiny text at the very bottom says stuff, people. Yeah, I, I know one guy has to look at, has to take a magnifying glass to read it. Uh, I think he has my like, bad eyes, but um, I don't really I, had to put it right up in my face or yet. Oh, did did magic have what? Like, did magic ever have like this like insane boom? Uh, recently, recently, yeah, recently, yes. Before, not really. Whenever I came back, actually, there was a real big boom, like. During Return to Ravnica and Theros block, and now Kanza Tarkir, there's actually a lot of people who've gotten into the game. Like, I remember watching like some tournaments, and it would only get like a couple thousand people watching it, like maybe a thousand, two thousand people watching it. Now, like I've watched like a pro tour, you get like eighteen thousand, twenty thousand people watching it. So, so it's and, it's definitely getting bigger. And the problem with getting bigger is you have people who cheat. Yeah, and that's another big thing that just happened recently. There's a lot of cheaters. Like a guy who's a uh, who is considered a rookie of the year was cheating. caught cheating all year. Oh jeez. Yeah. Um, no. And it's hard to catch people at these tournaments because there's like 800 people at these tournaments yeah. sometimes. So it's real hard unless they're on the feature matches, which are a new ad thing. So the feature matches, you know. You have the cameras on you, so you're able to, you know, be seen doing stuff, and that's the only reason they caught him. I think the uh, they really fix that. The judges should the, our higher up judges like uh, rank. What was it rank three? Yeah. Is that was that what they had over? Yeah. Over where we went to. Yeah. The rank three judges. The rank three judges should probably watch the winning bracket tables. I feel like like yeah, maybe one or two. There's so little judges there that they have to actually be all around the floor. Yeah, because they had There's about... There's 800 people. Well, yeah, the one at Dallas, there was about five to seven judges. No, there was like 20. Under 20? Yeah. Okay, because I didn't see a whole lot around me, but that's because, you know, I never really called the judge. And I always just feel like I'm going to end up harassing them. I got, I, I, I got an idea. Maybe we do this Las Vegas style. Get caught cheating, break their legs. That's mafia style, sir. I think Las Vegas style. That's mafia. Have you heard? Have you heard stories that happen in Las Vegas? Well, that's just Vegas. Yeah, people I know. go there to do crazy shit. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, the yeah, I didn't even know there was tournament. Well, as of now, I know there is tournaments. But uh, a few years back, when I started trying to get into magic, I had no idea there was tournaments for it. I didn't know there was tournaments for Yu-Gi-Oh. I didn't know. That there was like, uh, I didn't know there was this big hoopla, for lack of a better word, this whole big deal over a trading card game. I didn't know they had these big tournaments. Uh, prizes are like. The Depending on how big it is and how much people are expecting, the prize pools can be what? Same. Well, Pro Tours, I think it's 40,000. Uh, the one that we went to is. Uh, five thousand. There's some that go to fifty thousand, like a couple that are quite a bit. But the ones that we go to a lot, they're just like kind of small, like fifty, sixty players IQs. Those are on like two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, well, gotta ask since you guys are going to one in uh, where? Uh, San Antonio to GP. Yeah. How many tournaments have you have you guys been in, and have y'all won? Have y'all ever won one? I haven't won, but I've top aided uh, uh, like three. And I was over at Dragon Slayer. Yeah. But you've only been to three, three or four. What? We haven't been to a whole lot. Well, IQs. Yeah. We've been to twelve IQs. I've counted. We've been to twelve. Been to one. Uh, 
Open, and that's so far it this last year. And now the GP, which is bigger than those. And if you top eight that, you get to go to another bigger tournament for the Pro Tour. So, and I think GPs are, I don't know how much the prize pool is for those, but I don't really care. I just usually go to play. What about you? I don't go to tournaments. You don't go to No, I just play uh, for fun. I don't play competitive. Okay. So. Uh, a lot of people here, I've talked to a lot of people here that go to tournaments. I think, uh, isn't AJ trying to go to one? I think he is. Okay. Um... Uh, there's quite a few people who play here that go to tournaments and stuff like that. Um, oh wait, I can't remember. Is he was make was he making a match deck or a Yu-Gi-Oh deck for some kind of tournament? I think well, he was doing. I think he was getting ready for a Magic tournament or something like okay, that. Okay, if it's Magic, then it's this one that we're going to the GP. But he was getting a Yu-Gi-Oh deck ready for something. I just can't remember. But uh, I mean. If you play both, I mean, might as well try to go as many tournaments as you can. They're they're fun. They really are. But you have to watch out for people who steal. Because I heard a lot about the Yu-Gi-Oh! community and the competitive scene. We went to a couple uh, tournaments that were cross-section, like Magic players, and then there were Yu-Gi-Oh! players as well. And a lot of people were stealing, and they caught a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh! players doing it. I don't think it's just, you know... Just, just I know, it's not just that side, but I heard a lot about competitive Yu-Gi-Oh just because most of the players there try to make big money I don't know why but same with uh, happened in San Antonio a couple IQs yeah I think that's really the problem with hobbies is when people try to turn a hobby into, into a, job. a job and they try to make as much money as they can from it it's no longer fun it no yeah. longer has the concept of being an interest it's now they're trying to make a pretty penny off of it uh, how long have we been going? About 30, 36. Also, you guys need to pick up a little more. Okay. I'm trying to pick my next question. I can't find it. How many people are usually at these? At these tournaments, I, I guess it depends on the tournament. Yeah, it depends on the size of the tournament. Like the one, like the one you guys are going to. Is the end of this month? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Some GPs really vary. Like they can have like just a couple well, hundred players. And sometimes they go to a thousand, two yeah, thousand, four we'll, thousand. We'll say to the ones that we've been to. The the uh, IQs. We've I, been IQs been to. are small tournaments because they are just. Uh, qualifiers, they just qualify you for another big yeah. tournament the most, if you win those. The most we've seen there is like 50. No, we've seen 70. It was 70? I don't think you were there though. Yeah, I was probably not, because I've only been to Dragon Player and... Top Deck Gamings and... Uh, well, that's why when you say we went there 12, I don't think I've been going... Well, you haven't been going recently. You've been staying because you were like, I don't feel like playing my deck. Okay. Well, no, that's just so I didn't have a deck ready. That's that was the reason why. Yeah. So I was, was stuck with mono red aggro, and that uh, that wasn't a solid deck. <laughs> Not trying to be, but it's just a deck. yeah. But the biggest one we've been to was the Dallas Dallas open. tournament. Yeah, open. Which Dallas. had about eight hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred players. Yeah, me and Rob made top a uh, hundred, which I mean, hey, that says something. Uh, no. Means we suck. <laughs> no. Well, I mean. There were more, I felt like I got cheated once, because this guy, like... I was about to only, ask that. Yeah, I, I felt like I got cheated at least once or twice that tournament, because there's a guy, you're only allowed to have four of cards in your decks, and this guy just kept off the topping all four in a row. It just felt like this guy had to have been stacking his deck when I, you know, I would just, like, tap his deck, because I felt like... I wanted to get this over with quickly because yeah. I was like hungry at the time because these tournaments like they start at like 9 in the morning and they go till 11 in the afternoon or 11 at night yeah so I was just like yeah I want to go you know cross the street grab something to eat real quick get this over because I was already so, up a game so about, about how long do, do these tournaments last I'm guessing it 
more than like, twelve, like sometimes more than twelve hours, sometimes more than two days. Okay. The game, the games themselves, do they have time limits? Yes, you have fifty oh. minutes okay. per uh, best of three. All right. Uh, so, so you've actually, uh, so you've actually been like a victim of cheating before? Yeah. I'm pretty uh, sure someone's been a victim of cheating, but you can never really know. Well, I sort of felt it from one guy an IQ recently because when he was shuffling my deck he'd do it by little cards at a time and he would like look like slightly off to the side but he would you know sneer at Eyes. my deck yep yeah he looked like he was looking away but really just yeah and he would sneer at my deck real quick and then shuffle it to the top and if there were like you know like say lands and stuff and he'd yeah. hand it to me uh yeah, what happened to people doing stuff for fun People don't want to do it. They have well, to when you have money on the table, uh, that's one thing. That's gambling, sir. Like, why do you think most poker tournaments is a lot of cheating going on? Yeah. Um, the. When you put money on the line, people do some crazy shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have another question, but I can't remember what it was. So, I'm gonna ask something. Uh, we'll jump back to. Uh, Magic in in a moment. Just want to ask: Have any of you guys played like? Ha, have any of you guys played D and D? Uh yeah yeah. yeah. One time or no twice. Well, but played, well don't you it was just weekly? a casual. Yeah, uh, I actually play on Sundays after. After we get done with this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah normally, but we're not gonna do D and D today, so. Right. Uh, now, I'm just asking: Is there? Uh. Like any funny stories from playing D and D that you can recall? Uh, not me myself, but I know someone who played D and D. Uh, Mitchell. He yeah. uh, searched the room for a good ten yeah, minutes. Yeah, he pissed and, off his teammates. No, he, so. tipped, he pissed off Clayton. Yeah. Clayton said, "Can I throw him? Legitimately, yeah. can I throw him out of the window there's tower?" There's a window in the tower, and they're like, "Can I throw him out?" And he's like, "Yeah, roll for it." And he rolled for it and got, got it. it and just threw him out. Yeah, he had an eighteen, <laughs> yeah. eighteen plus something. I think his strength. Something, and he got thrown out. Held Killed him. <laughs> and I remember Mitchell just getting up, really quietly, going to the back, sitting at the back, crossing his arms, <laughs> and just pouting. Uh, <laughs> now, one thing I've learned from D and D is, whenever somebody wants you to get on the boat, do not get on the boat, because every fucking time, every time they want to get you on a boat, there something's going to happen. If yeah, you, the DM. It, of course. It, it's either going to be uh, like frogmen or something, or I can't remember what they are. But, uh, merfolk, probably. Yeah, it's a, some kind of fish. That's people. the only yeah, merfolk. That's the only thing I legitimately know out of some lore, but that's because of magic. Uh, you, I don't know. Basically, they'll they'll just throw you in there just so you get killed by the kraken. Basically, I remember that in one game. I can't remember what this was called. I don't can't remember what the creature was called. But essentially, it was a giant frog. That's how the DM described it. it. Was basically a giant frog, um, and I like one of the things is I have terrible luck in in rolling. For whatever reason, I always somehow fuck up rolling. Um, and I think the DM was kind of out for me on this because I, you know, the situation was the frog was, you know. You know, flinging its tongue and like its tongue grabbed me, and I had like I had to like cut it with my I had to cut it with my sword. I had to roll like I can't remember any of the exact numbers, but it was something like I had to roll like a twelve or something or uh, something over a twelve. Uh, I rolled a one. Oh, then, critical failures. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like at every step, I every step I fucked it up. Uh, I managed to survive. But that's because, um, that was because of my, uh, I don't know what to call them, my, uh, party members or whatever. One of them wound Meat up- shield. there you go. One of them wound up killing, killing it, so I managed to survive. But, it's just, I learned that, basically, he just got us on the boat just to do the frog thing. Because yeah. he really wanted to do the frog. I'm trying to think of my, my past D&D experience. Uh, I know I played it with Renee, 
and our experience was so slow and so boring because I was a mage in the back, and apparently I got blocked out because of a door, and I just pretty see just fell asleep because I got bored. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, this makes sense. It's sitting in the back, chill in the back, whatever. Door, I'm pretty sure some bullshit's going to happen because the DM loves pulling bullshit out of his ass. Yeah. Um, oh, look, the door magically closes, and it's locked, and you're locked out because you pissed me off because you didn't trade me a certain card at the last point that one time. So you know what? Fuck you. You don't get to play. <laughs> uh, what about you? Any funny D and D stories? Not really, except last week I was uh, I'm playing a wizard in the late, in the series that I'm going in. Is it a wizard or is it a mage? Because there's a difference. It's a wizard. <laughs> okay. And, well, I'm uh, sure we'll get comments. We had a uh, long rest right before we went up. We went up against a dragon, and in that long rest, I filled up all my spell slots with magic missile. So we went up, then we ended up going against the dragon. I just used all my magic missiles on the dragon, and I was the only one hitting the dragon. And then Alan would rave, and then Alan rave across the dragon and killed it. Um, I got a dragon story, but I'm not really sure what this guy was thinking. If this was even possible, I I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about D&D. I played games, but it's not like I'm. I, I, I don't. I'm not an expert. I don't know a whole lot about the ending. How technical can you get with D&D? But, um, Depending on the rule. But the... And if it's okay with DM. Although if you offer DM some chips, sodas, and other things you more than likely like, or a favorite food, you get to play. But if you don't, you don't get to play. Ah. Uh, um... But the situation was we were being... We had to kill a dragon. That was basically... It was, bare, bare bones quest. Go and kill a dragon. That was basically it. Go from X to Y. Yeah, basically. Uh, Show why I go back to X. One thing, a, a little nitpick I've always had on how people use dragons in D&D is they always have them land. They always have them, like, land and, you know, they're on the ground swiping at you. Well, and you and usually, all that. You usually go with the archer and you shoot the wings or have a mage if you don't have an archer. Yeah, but it's or you like, have some concept like that. The DM will always have the dragon land. And that made no sense to me. Because it's like... It's a dragon. It's not stupid. Wouldn't it just fly around and just spam fire? I just figured that's how it would fight, but whatever. I guess I, guess, it's I don't know. It's not fair. It has to be fair. I, I, I'm not good at D&D, so... I'm not good at D&D, so maybe that's it. I mean, you could technically say it just swoops in, picks someone up, throw them far away, they die. Congratulations. Welcome to reality. You can't win. You lose all the time. Uh, I'm just thinking that if, if you're finding a dragon, it needs to be like this... It needs to be hard. Like it needs to be something hard, and it. It needs to be epic. A, a lot of these times, it's not that hard. It's like, usually they in this DM. I'm, you know, I'm not going to mention his name, but he, this DM, he um, always he loved throwing dragons at us. Like he always went to the dragon thing first. Uh, but you know, he would go through like the monster manual and just find like cool shit he wants us to fight, basically. We pretty much fought Cthulhu. Uh, I don't know if it was actually Cthulhu, but that's how he described it. Um, but anyway, my story is this one guy who I, I imagine there's always that one guy who wants to wants to be famous for doing something. This one guy thought he was going to charm the dragon. He was going to charm the dragon. I've told this story before. Uh, he was trying to charm the dragon. And basically the thing is he's going to sing a song for the dragon and that that was... Well, that ruling, I, I, actually, I don't know any d and ruling, so I don't know why I'm asking, but... I'm, I'm like, I don't know if you can do that. The DM, DM allowed it. Uh, and the guy, I swear to God, I'm not even kidding. He actually gets up and starts singing. Like, for real. He gets up and starts singing. Like, and out of his some, chair. Some people get into death and really enjoy it. And that's one thing that I like about D&D. It's I let people express themselves. We were ro rolling because of the song he did. He just started sing. He just started singing the theme song to My Little Pony. Oh, like wow. he do every word, and um, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna make fun of him too much because. Now, what know, version was it? Was it the old one or the new one? Plum. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever that. Whoever. Whatever show that made it popular. Um. The. But yeah, full on brony. Uh, I mean, 
I won't make fun of him for liking what he likes. It's just, I just thought that was hilarious. That, no shame. He just did it. Um, I don't know. I don't got a whole, that's basically it for funny and stupid stories from D&D that I got. Um, okay, well, jumping back to magic. Um, I, I'm not really sure sure if there would be like any funny situations that comes out of magic that has there ever been for you guys uh just recently when i was watching a stream uh i've seen a couple like where people it's misplay misplayed. yeah they misplay so real hard. bad and it's just like kind of funny uh i'm not gonna say the guy's name but it was in a star city games event um so he has practically the win on his side or here, let's let's go with a more famous one. Let's go with the uh, Brian Kibler uh, bonfire thing for uh, I believe it was Worlds, and uh, well, that's also a famous one with the Jedi mind trick. Yeah, there is also that, but I don't remember that story very well. It was with uh, something about protection, and he the way he worded it. But going on with yours, I'll let you finish. Uh, so the only out the. Uh, we, I don't know which team he was against, but the only out they had was a certain card called Bonfire of the Damned, which had a certain ability if you get it off the top, it has a cost called Miracles, which makes it cheaper. And he had the exact amount to kill him, and if he, just di if he didn't have it, he would lose. So just off the top, he doesn't look at it, just throws it down, and just goes like the, like does, throws out his arms, he's like, what? What about it? And just like the stairs, because uh, in Worlds it's a you're three v three, so like Kibler's like teammates just like look at him with like disgust, like <laughs> it's just like wow, that happened. Well, I mean it is luck. Luck is a variation. But, well, yeah, it's a sixty. It's a card game where you have to draw. So yeah, there was uh, that. Now I got kind of a story. And this is uh, not really a funny story. It's amusing to me. But, um, this happened yesterday. I, I was playing, I was actually playing Michael here. Um, I, I can't remember how, how the situation got to this, but it was basically, I got you down to, like, what was it? I got you down to, like, a couple hundred life points. You got me down to about 2,000 life points. And I was real, I, I, uh, wanted to, just, I wanted to beat him with, uh, uh, elemental hero Bristentrix. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Bristentrix. And then he, he just kept on taking out my uh, Spark Man. Yeah. He just kept on bringing it back with my field spell. The I was making sure that I didn't attack you with something that would have been, you know, enough to beat you. I wanted to make sure that last hit was Bristentrix. I can't even remember why. Do you? Do you remember why I wanted to take you out with Bristentrix so bad? I think it's because Bristentrix doesn't see a whole lot of game finishers. Yeah. In, in Yu-Gi-Oh! because of our attack points. I thought, I thought you said something that kind of spurred me to do it. I can't remember. No, I don't think you said anything. I think it was just... I can't remember how this ha why this happened. It's just... Uh, basically, I, I think you were joking about me beating you with Bercentrix. I think I was. Yeah, that's right. You you were laughing about me beating you with Bercentrix, and I just did it to spite you. Just to say, yeah, I beat you with Bercentrix. Yeah. Which, for those who don't know, Bercentrix has like uh, 1,100 attack or something? Bercentrix has 1,200 attack. He got me down to 100 life points left, and he used a heated heart on Bercentrix. So I Sparkman could... has 1,600 attack points. He gave... Bristinatrix 1700 attack points and so, attacked with Bristinatrix that ended the game. Which I made so, sure that it was 100. Well, he got me perfectly. I like got you right. No negative or anything like that. Uh, not really a funny story. I just find it really amusing. Uh, what about you, Don? Mm, I wouldn't really say I've actually had encountered any certain things of fun. Uh, but usually whenever I play, I usually try to make it fun for usually both of us, you know. I'll just sit there, you know, try to be casual about what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. Try to at least make it interesting for both people. 
Now, I've encountered people in Yu-Gi-Oh who get really, uh... Upset? Uh, obsessed. Not upset, but obsessed with, uh, what is legal and not in tournaments. And if I have, like, a card in my deck who, that's, you know, say is banned, and I didn't know that, uh, I've met some people who will just stop the entire game just to make me take the card out of my deck. Because, you know, it's just a casual game, and he wants, basically he wanted me to, to stop, go for my deck, take the card out of my deck, and start the entire game over. And we were, like, about two moves, two moves away from ending the game. Like, he, he would have attacked, attacked me, like, in two moves, and I would have been dead. But, you know, he wanted to start the entire game over again. And hmm. I don't know, have you ever encountered somebody like that? I haven't encountered somebody particularly like that. I've just um, encountered people who say, oh, that card's banned. It's like, okay, they I'll just, take it out later. But they just kind of like, do they kind of like hover over you when you have something like that? No, not really. Because they, 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 After a tournament, if I didn't know. They, okay, so they, you know, respectfully the, would tell you afterwards. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll remind me that, uh, hey. Remember to take this, take this card out of your deck. Well, okay. Thanks so for reminding they, me. they're actually mature about it. Yeah. This guy threw basically his spell over it. Um, and that was like in stories. I, um, now, in fact, um, yesterday, wasn't everybody reminding you that there, okay, yeah, was, Elemental Heroes were banned? Yeah, I was playing with Elemental Heroes Stratos, and Stratos is banned, and I didn't realize that, so... It seemed like four different people, four people. Yeah, I, I summoned element. I announced I was summoning Elemental Hero Stratos, and everybody at the other side of the room. Stratos is banned. Well, what? Stratos is banned. Okay. I'm in the middle of a casual duel, so it doesn't really matter anyway. But they, they. But I'll take it out after. Like four people got up and had proclaimed it was banned. Yeah. So. Uh, but th but I haven't looked at the list in a couple of weeks, so. Well. Seriously, the list will change like in a week, like in a matter of weeks. It might, because there was a new set that came out the other day. So oh, was yeah, you, they always do uh, new bannings whenever a new set comes out oh, for okay. most card games. Uh, now, besides Magic and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, like you and me, uh, what other card games have you guys played? The World of Warcraft card game, Warcraft and Overlord. Uh, yeah, I played Warlord. Warlord is, oh, Warlord. Warlord. Warlord is one I was thinking of earlier, not Warcraft, but yeah. Um, have you played any like unusual card games? Like, you just saw like you saw something and you're like, what was that thing? Or was it the weird card game that was kind of semi popular for a little while? You started out with five little shields that came off the top of your deck. Uh, we had a show on Cartoon Network. I'm trying to remember what uh, it was called. Duel Master. I think that's what it was. Duel Masters, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Uh, that I don't be. remember the actual game. I remember no, the Cartoon that. Network. Um, I played some unusual ones. Uh, like, I had a friend who was like hardcore into Doctor Who. So he had us play the Doctor Who card game. Which, I don't care how many times he explained it, that game made no sense. And it's just... That, that was just... You're better off playing Pokemon. Basically, at that point. Yeah. And this was, you know, this is... Again, they're in this boom where everybody was making a card game. Everybody had one. I'm, they, I mean, the freaking... Uh, not They literally made a card game out of baseball cards. Which, you know, it's a logical step, considering most people collect baseball cards. Well, that's the original trading card, I guess. Am I alone yeah. on that? What? I didn't really play. I didn't collect those. Yeah. I wasn't a big like sports fan at that time. No, I I wasn't saying if you guys collected them. I was uh, I, I was saying am I alone on noticing that? that like, oh no. Every, yeah. No, I know that. Um and I don't think they had like four different Marvel card games. Yeah, but that's just Marvel. They try to make anything. Oh yeah, that's right. We we did play uh that Marvel card game, that was actually pretty fun. Oh yeah, the superhero one... 
I mean, they're all superhero ones, but uh, I'm trying to remember which one it was. They had a little spur during the time when Teen Titans was going around. So we're talking 2006. Yeah, around that time. Um, I, I, there's been multiple Marvel games, DC games. Um, I, I've played a few of them. I've played uh, uh, DC Heroes Alliance, uh, Hero Alliance, or yeah, uh, Justice League Heroes Alliance, which is kind of redundant because it isn't the Justice League already at Alliance of Heroes, but wh whatever. Um, it was it was actually not that bad. Uh, the bar, I remember one of the Marvel games being horrible, just just completely horrendous. Uh, Heroes Alliance was actually not that bad, but the whole con the whole concept of the game was, you know, superheroes for superheroes, no villains. It's like basically it's one of those internet discussions of who would win in a fight, basically. Who cares? It's just. Uh, Oh god, that reminded me of something. Somebody actually tried to argue with me over something like that. And I, I just try to tell them in ten different ways, I don't give a shit. Like some person was telling, trying, it was that whole Goku Superman thing. Oh. And I, I am so sick of that argument. But anyway, the card game itself was actually pretty, pretty, uh, was actually pretty good. I was more into the cards themselves, so I didn't really bother playing it a whole lot. I used to collect the cards for it. I think they discontinued that in like 2010. Uh, now the weirdest card game I've ever seen in a store was okay I was about, I was going to talk, I was going to say there was a My Little Pony one but no I found something weird. The Muppets. A trading card game based around the Muppets. Yeah it's a little awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is kind of dying. Uh, I think we can get out of the card card hobbies now because I think yeah. we've got to at this point. We can probably go more into uh, other hobbies. I mean, technically, there are fuck ton of things and what can be considered a hobby. Oh, well, it yeah, it depends. Playing video games a hobby? Yes, yes. Collecting video games, playing video games, and doing stuff. Anything about a video game is usually a hobby. It is considered okay, a hobby. Okay. Um, Tell you turn it, it to the point of making it into a job. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, one one hobby I used to have, and I, I mentioned it earlier that I, that I uh, draw. I, I don't really draw that whole lot anymore because my you know hand range is starting to get very limited. Uh, but I used to draw all the time. Unfortunately, most of the stuff I drew was all anime looking, because that was what. Like if you look for a lot of my drawings, well, the majority of them are anime style, because uh, you know I got obsessed with anime for a little while. Um, and so everything had like the sharp eyes and all that and the stupid hair and but um I always wanted to like make my own comic book that's basically where that was going I, you know eventually I kept up on it I think a lot of people usually want to make a comic book I think that was like a lot of the kids kids dreams yeah it was like that and uh I think with little kids it was like that or they wanted to make video games with you know a lot obviously a lot of those kids go go and live that dream basically um too bad the majority of them get their dreams are usually squashed once they get into the video game business but yeah whatever um with drawing it's just it was just something i try to uh, i i try to stick to uh according to my art teacher i was a horrible drawer but whatever um she you should kick her in her nuts Fuck that bitch. <laughs> I'm seeing how long I can keep that awkward silence going. No, it's for long. Um, no, it's just uh, she. You know, she just didn't like. Um, she didn't like um, cartoons. Basically, she thought it was a slap in the face of artists. Um, if I see her, I will punch her in the face. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> this was, no, I don't want to do that. No physical violence. But, um, but I mean, that, actually, that's I can't remember which art teacher. Like, how the fuck? Middle school. How, how can a fucking teacher say that to a kid? A little kid. Uh, your concept well, I was of, not a little kid. I was like, I was like 13. Even then, you know, even as a teenager, how can you have the concept to go up to someone and be like, that's shit. Just because I hate it. You're fucking shit. Your art style is shit. I um, hate you. 
my high school art teacher was a little bit more, a little bit more shrewd, but she had a point that uh, it's like learn how. She basically said, learn how to draw. Uh, if you learn how to draw realistically, then you know how to draw cartoons because you know how to accentuate. Um, like, bitch, shut up! I'm gonna go make South Park. <laughs> that's probably what. That's, that's probably what they logic, said. Your logic, bitch. It was probably a lot. That's probably what they said in high school when they were in high school. It's like can't draw. Well, fuck you. I'm gonna make a cartoon. Right. I don't really like their whole pretentious. I can understand if you're trying to teach a kid something compared to saying, "Hey, your stuff is completely trash. You're discouraging." Uh, now, with well, with my high school teacher, it was more like she was more like. I figured it was like by, I figured by like insulting my work, she, I, I think she was meaning for me to try it harder. Uh, oh, no, really not, not the military concept of, it doesn't work in the artistic field. If you do the military yeah. concept of destroying and rebuilding, it does not work. The only thing you can truly do to help using artists is compliment. Well, it's not really not what she was doing. She was. Uh, kind of basically trying to get me to try hard to actually try different techniques and stuff like well, that. Well, I mean, if you wanted to help with techniques, you usually teach the kid different yeah, techniques and say, Hey, you know, yeah, you see the, the small error and you try to help them. There's the difference between yelling and saying, Hey, you need because you're just backseating it. Then. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but keep in mind, I was an obnoxious asshole back then. I was, your nuts. I was a little, I, I was a little douchebag back then, so but um. Yeah, drawing was like my thing for a while, uh, and, and you know it just kind of faded away, it just l l lack of desire and all that. Uh, so, what were like, like for you guys? What are your other uh, hobbies? Um, well, for me, usually, like I said, when I tell you, I do drawings and animation. Yeah. And, and you know, I guess that's probably what really upset me when you're telling me about the whole teacher is when people go into the whole concept of backseating and discouraging, thinking they're really helping. Because there's, there's different reason between critiquing, helpful critiquing, and destructive critiquing. Yeah. Destructive critiquing is just by saying, "Hey, this is all bad," and you're not trying to help at all. You don't explain yeah. what's all bad. You don't show what's Basically, bad. Basically, if it's not what it's, if it's not what they they like, they'll call it shit. Yeah. And they make then they'll make no bones about it. Yeah, and the more constructive critiquing is you acknowledge the good with the bad. You say, hey, I can acknowledge and see what you're doing good, and I'm going to give you concepts and places to go that would help. Yeah, like, I, I see where, what you're trying to do. Here, you're, you're doing this. Let's, let me help you not do that anymore, basically yeah. like that. It's in a sense of assisting with your errors. And, you know, and also then there comes the concept of doing what you do for yeah. others. Yeah. Not because, you know, for other people. And that's why I kind of do my thing, is because I love it. I try to find a style that I like. I try to find a style of animation, art, you know. Because I'm not doing it for other people, I'm doing it for myself. Yeah. So this is the enjoyment of it. Creating. Creating. Uh, now, have, now um, actually, you know, I'll hang on to this. I'll let uh, you guys yeah. get it. And uh, I guess I'll let the slide on to someone else, because I don't want to take the whole... Yeah. Uh, what about you, Rob? Um... Give me a second to think about it. Okay, well, just move the yeah. knuckle then if you got anything. I don't really have any other hobbies besides playing video games and watching anime. Well, you know, that's the concept of a hobby. So, uh, yeah. you, know, you can explain in detail with it if you want to. Like, uh, I guess you can't really call me watching anime a hobby because I don't keep up with it. Well, I mean, if you, it's a hobby is what you're interested in and what you truly like, it's what you enjoy doing. Yeah, um, so, d just curious, like, your, like, what's your favorite game, like, currently, like, that you're currently playing? Currently, it'd be Destiny. Destiny? Yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about that, but I've also heard uh, equally bad things. It's not on PC, that's what makes me mad. Although my computer probably couldn't handle it anyways. Um, what, I don't really know a whole lot of details about Destiny. I can tell that, from what I can tell, it's like mixed between an R RPG and first person shooter. Borderlands. Right? This thing's Borderlands. So it's, is it yeah. like Borderlands? Yeah, it pretty much is like Borderlands, except you, it's not local multiplayer, it's online multiplayer. Yeah. It's what Borderlands should have been in the month. Now, you can go from planet to planet, right? 
Yeah, you can go from Earth to the Moon to Venus to Mars, and then there's a little. Can you go to Uranus? <laughs> you can't go that far out in the solar system. And then there's a little spot in the uh, asteroid belt. Now, I've been told that there's like issues with story. Like there barely is story to it. There's a little bit of story to it, but not a whole lot. Is the game most the game's mostly built around exploring, right? Yeah. It, okay. It's falling under the mechanism of mechanics to story. If you're going into what to expect, you're going in for the game, not the story. It does, and see, a lot of people argue with me on this. I'm usually going to do a game for the game. I, sto a great story to me. Added bonus. Yeah, it shouldn't be. A, it shouldn't be a requirement. But that's why I like. That's why I really love games like. Because uh, it, you know, it rolls with it. Hey, this is a well, game. Don't take it serious. It, it depends on what you're going into and what you expect. Like, oh, I'm not gonna go into playing The Walking Dead. And be like, oh, I'm going in for the gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are going in for the story. It depends on the game you're playing. It's what, yeah. Uh, that's, but when it came to like pure gameplay, that's why I'm really, really excited to try um, Sunset Overdrive. Because it, like, it makes no bones about it. That it's just a game made for fun. That's basically it. Well, all games are made for fun, but you guys get what I mean. Actually, there's some games that are no longer for fun. Esport games, uh, Call of Duty. Just yeah. that, that's e people who turn that's esports turn from like games into a competitive scene that shouldn't have a competitive scene it should just be for fun, but whatever. Well, really, magic's for fun, but they turn it competitive. Yeah. Well, I mean, the competitive is fun in the concept of based on the person's banner on. So based on their perspective, I can get it. That kind of competitive scene as well, because you're not just on a video game playing it a lot. You're actually going out face to face, and face to face with a person. It, it's more interactive, I should say. Yeah. You're, you're not just, hey, I have a microphone and I'm just talking on. I'm gonna game. talk shit to you. Yeah, that's about it. But uh, the really the concept of it is, uh, it's when it doesn't become fun. Yeah. It's um, when it's no longer fun. Now I can make that argument. That's Call of Duty in a nutshell where the game is just not that fun. At all. But it's based on the person's perspective. you got to remember that. What we don't see as fun, another person can see as fun. My cousin sees as fun because that's his favorite game. It's called yeah. So that's why, you know, as much as... I mean, I don't make fun of it because there's as much as they want to express they love it, I will express how much I hate it. Yeah. It's in the balance of equilibrium of, hey, you love it and you want to express your love, I can express my hate. Yep. Yeah. We're going to have to take a break here for a second. Oh, okay. Can you go back to Yeah. All right. I was just waiting for you to finish. All right. Um, well, I'm not quite sure where to go from here. I guess we'll talk about just other forms of hobbies. Just uh, what, e e either if we get it or not, but just hobbies a lot of people will like. Um, one thing, for example, is since um, we're, we're probably going to go to PAX uh, at What's that? That's in January, right? Yeah. You're not even looking at the schedule. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have to look. Uh, <laughs> there's stuff I have to look yeah. up. Like, I need to know the address and all that. Like, the, the place where it is and all that. But anyway, um, cosplaying. That seems to be, for a lot of people, that seems to be their main hobby. Because a lot, of, it, it depends on the costume. But some of these costumes take them, like, the entire year to make. They get ready for like Comic Con or they get ready for, um, well, PAX or E3 or, well, not really E3, but. Um, the big conventions. The big conventions, like. Uh, there's anime ones, there's all there's, kinds. Yeah. Well, even at the small ones, you know, Dragon Slayer, there was a few cosplayers. Yeah. I mean, I was watching a, nost a Nostalgia Critic QA at. Uh, I can't remember what the, what the convention was. It, it was some kind of anime convention. And one guy asked him, he was holding this giant foam sword. He, he was like a character from Naruto. Mm -hmm. um, like, I was hoping that you would know the character, but... Yeah. I forgot that you didn't watch your 
You didn't watch Naruto. I'm sorry, that's Aaron. No, that, that was Aaron, that's right. I, I would have to ask him on that one. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, the cosplayers, they just put so much hard work into the, those costumes. Now, of course, there's people who buy their costumes. Yeah. But, uh, and I just noticed there's certain costumes that, even if the characters are male, for some reason, some of these costumes look better on women. Like, like Robin. I, it's like, the only good Robin cosplay I've ever seen are when women dress up as Robin. Well, I mean, seeing a grown man in little tights. Yeah, no one wants to see that, but... <laughs> I mean, if they go as Nightwing, okay. That's, that's probably better. Uh, like, going in as Robin, just kind of like... Wait, oh, Nightwing? No. You, you sure about that? The skin tight leather? Okay, never mind. I didn't know that. Uh, maybe... Uh, anyway. No nut huggers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, th there's always a Deadpool. At, it, almost like every convention, there's just, a Deadpool. There's, well, there's, there's a, a Deadpool. famous guy who goes around to every convention and he tries to act exactly like Deadpool does. Yeah, uh, I don't know. He just, I don't know. To me, by the it, way, it, the Deadpool boy, and Spider-Man. Yeah, those are the easiest ones <laughs> to find, and yeah. maybe Batman as well. There was a, a convention. Now I know you guys aren't, you guys aren't in the wrestling, but there's the, there was this wrestling convention. Where one of the things they had that night was super, superhero throwdown, where it was a bunch of indie wrestlers dressed up as superheroes. There was a Deadpool, there was Spider Man, there was fucking, uh, fucking, as a tag team, Henchmen 21 and 24 from Venture Brothers. <laughs> that was awesome. That must have been awesome. Uh, and they even do, they even had the they even could get the voices down like they they had the voices perfect. Oh, that's even. That's perfect, then. Uh, and you can clearly hear the guy playing. Uh, I can't remember which which one's which, which number is which, but the you know skinny one. Uh, the one with like the deeper like with, with the Ray, Ray Ramon voice. Yeah, and he's just he has that voice down perfectly, and you can hear you constantly hear him throughout the match. And these and like I said, they they're like real wrestlers and all that. But it's just funny that the reason why they. They did it is because they love cosplay. Uh, there's a wrestler right now in WWE who's a huge, fit, huge cosplayer. Like he loves to do it every year. Um, like if, like he said, his favorite cosplay to do was I can't even remember what it was. It was from it was from some anime. It was from some anime that he he like loved this character so much he had to dress up like him. He even dressed like dressed up at him in a wrestling sh at wrestling events. Hmm. Um, he was just like really obsessed with this show. I can't remember what it was. It was like it was something from the like the mid two thousands. Um, I can't remember when it was. He he said what it was. I can't remember. Damn it! No, this is gonna piss me off. <laughs> it's gonna piss me off because I can't remember this. I'll remember it later on when it's too late. And be like fuck. But um. I'm trying to remember what else they had. They had a guy dressed like, up like the Tick, which I really hope you did. Like you actually finally looked him up. You need to look up the Tick. At some point in time. Watch episodes on YouTube. They're easy to find. Ugh. Anyway, it was just really, really cool. Uh, these guys, all these guys were big cosplayers, and they happened to be wrestlers. Uh, so even like these big, you know. Big muscle, well, they're not muscles. I say muscle bound, but they're not. Um, but guys who were like professional wrestlers who were like all into this kind of stuff, not a whole lot of difference, really, if you think about it. I mean, if you look at some of these guys who get really into character, I, I mean, at conventions, like the guy who, who does the Deadpool thing, mm -hmm. like he really gets into that character. Um, didn't he get, no, somebody dressed up as Deadpool get arrested. Yeah. There's plenty of people getting arrested at these things, doing stupid shit. Uh, and the guy just got on the subway. He was going to the convention. You can't, like, like he had guns on his back. They were toy guns. They were obviously toy guns. That would suck. He got arrested, and pe people around was actually booing the cops. Because they arrested Deadpool. Well, I mean, I'd probably be pretty pissed too, especially if you also tell you're being taken in for no good reason. Good point. You look suspicious. Yeah, <laughs> <we're going. laughs> the guy was not helping it, by the way. 
Because he was trying to be Deadpool. Like, he was trying to do... He was doing, like, the mannerisms and all that. But... You know what's sad? I never read a Deadpool comic. I didn't even know he existed until that game. Until that video I didn't game. know he existed until people started making him big on Imgur. Uh... Widely popular character. I, I only... My experience with him is reading one comic book... At... You know... After I discovered the character in uh, that Deadpool game. Um, and by the way, I think the guy... They're doing a Deadpool movie from what I heard. And they're going to get the guy who played, like, not Deadpool in X-Men Origins. But apparently the guy is, like, really, like, amazing. Hmm. And, you know, he has the voice and all that for So then it'll so. be justice for the movie, then. Yeah, I'm like... So if the movie's shit, at least the character's good. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, uh, there you go. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of some other stuff. I mean, really about cosplayers. Well, I mean, do you see like the really? Have you seen like the insane cosplayers? Especially for like the Mass Effect characters. Yeah. Oh God, they. Like they can almost insane. almost spot on. I'm like God, damn. Like even the Halo cosplayers yeah, too. It's just um, like the detail of the suit. I do find it funny that there's some cosplayers who cosplay do Halo cosplay, but they're not doing it because they love Halo. They love Rooster Teeth. Yeah. So they so they have like a guy dressed up in red armor, you know, trying to be Sarge because he has you know, like the shotgun and all that. Yeah. And uh, uh, you see a lot of stormtroopers too, which I think is actually interesting. It goes to show that's what most people are interested in from the Star Wars side. Yeah. You will see a lot of stormtroopers. No, fuck Luke Skywalker. No one must be killed. <laughs> Only the little kid that looks Kelly Walker. Uh, I don't even see anybody cosplaying as Han Solo. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. Just, you just want, they won't be like yeah. amazing, amazing. Oh, yeah. uh, actually, I think I did see some pretty amazing Star Wars cosplays. Uh, I did tell you about the, the, the six foot, whoop, the six foot, uh, what is it, the little koala bear looking things. Uh, I don't know what they call them, ask me. I, uh, I, anybody? I don't really not, care not for Star Jawas. Wars. Not Jawas. Right, uh, now you're going to get a whole bunch of hate mail. Ewoks, maybe. I don't Ewoks, know. Ewoks, that's it. Ewoks. Oh, shit, I knew The six foot Ewok. Go Star or Star Wars Battlefront. The only reason I probably remember that. <laughs> I'm the only Star Wars fan here, aren't I? Probably. probably. Yeah. Oh, great. But anyway, um, you know what game seems to get the most cosplay? And I don't, I know next to nothing about this game. Uh, League of Legends. Does it? Yeah. People, so there's a whole con for it. People yeah, are so like insane for that game. I don't like. I played it for two whole years and got semi-competitive at it, and I didn't even care for it anymore. Like I could just give less of a fuck because the community itself is kind of shit. See, no, that's the opposite of what I've always heard. I've always heard that they it, it had a great community and all that. Oh god, they're, they're so lying. Drinking assholes. They're lying. Trust me. I tried getting into that community. I was like, hey, maybe it's not all about. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, okay. So it's basically like uh, the Call of Duty community. Yeah, probably worse. Is that probably? Yeah. No, literally, they're actually, if you go in the communities and, like, the rating system, they're they're the worst. Yes, Seriously? they're out there. Yes, yes. they're the worst. Yeah, wait, I thought, I thought Call of Duty was worse because it was nothing but, uh... No, not, apparently not Hero, Hero of Norn, apparently. No. It's League of Legends is literally no. the worst. Okay. Jeez. Um... Like, Which there's, there's good people in it, but there's just rare. so many people in it, so, like, all the shit clouds over to good. Where would, I know you're not into the game, but, uh, where would Minecraft be on that? It's actually up there, too. Sadly enough. Yes. Wow. So I was doing some everybody research have, on the community. Everybody I've ever, everybody I've ever talked to on Minecraft have always been, like, the nicest people. It's just apparently because... Some of them have kids who go around and, you know, they'll destroy stuff or... Oh, you're, okay. you're talking about like... They'll go stuff. out to a certain point to where it causes the server to crash. Oh, okay. Basically, uh, we're, we're, they got a name for them, I think. Uh, just trolling. Griefers or something. Yeah, they, they'll grief the fuck out of your server. Yeah. Uh, okay. I didn't, and speaking of Minecraft, you actually do see uh, Minecraft... Uh, Mine. What is it called? Uh, cosplay. Cosplays. Yeah, uh, Minecon is a big thing. It's... it's Quickly becoming one of the big con uh, conventions. Uh, I like. I've, you guys know. I I'm a big fan of uh, video games. Awesome on YouTube. They do a thing for Minecon every year. 
either they go to it or they do some kind of big show for it. Uh, and it's just as insane the Minecraft fans. Um, and I do find it funny that no matter what level of fame, certain characters will, somebody's going to cosplay as them. People cosplay as the fucking nostalgia critic. Yeah, I've seen that. People cosplay as Linkara. Like YouTube personalities, they'll cosplay as them. Yeah, yeah. usually it's the ones that have like an actual character. Yeah. Uh, I've Always. even seen Angry Joe cosplay. Yeah. Which, or no, wait, that could have just been e uh, uh, I think I think the funniest one I saw was Casim uh, G. G. Right, yeah, when he must the dopp- the doppelganger. Yeah, he's like, it's my doppelganger. <laughs> and uh, then they ask him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because everyone makes fun of him because he, he has a big ass nose, so he's like, here, give me an SMO kiss. <laughs> uh, one guy I've seen a obnoxious amount of cosplay for, and it's just insane how this keeps getting up. Um, have any of you guys played uh, Phoenix Wright? No, no, I haven't played no. it, but I've heard plenty of yeah. it. Okay. I freaking love the games, but um, I cannot believe how many freaking uh, I can't even remember the name of the character. Um, Gumtrue or something, Detective Gumtrue. There's like millions of people class playing as Gumtrue for some reason. That and a bunch of Street Fighter people as well. Oh yeah, there's always going to be some <laughs> guy as the Ryu or Chun Li or. Well, stuff I mean, like if that. you look at it, the more the more easier ones are. I, I was going to say the the Russian, the Russian dude. I can't remember his name. Bison. Do what? Bison. No, no, no. Uh, the Russian, the Russian the wrestler. wrestler. Oh, Zangief. Zangief. Yeah, I've yeah. seen cosplay of him, yeah. and the funny thing it's hilarious seeing people like with the fake. Here. Yeah. There was this one guy who I swear to God, he was jacked to the gills, and you know he had like actual chest hair and all that, and he looked exactly like him, like a real life Zangi. Yeah. Uh, just jeez. Yeah, the amount of effort that goes into this stuff. Well, I don't. No, I he, he the guy the guy was a bodybuilder. He just happened to be a big Street Fighter fan. Um. Then there's, um... Shout out to the fighting game community. <laughs> well, I'm just... There, there's creative for anybody else when it comes to the... Uh, when it comes to cosplay. Mm-hmm. Um, one... I found this uh, kind of cool. Uh, again, Video Games Awesome was doing this... Uh, they were actually have They actually had their own little thing where they had people come up and show off their, cos- their costumes. Because uh, they're big into it. They love cosplayers. They love the effort that goes into it. So they want to showcase these people. There's this one guy who did a cosplay of Johnny Cage. <coughs> and again, the guy was ripped. And he actually had like these, he actually had, like, these two girls with him the whole time. And he like did his pose. He put both of them on his shoulders. And he even held like Fraser on his shoulder too. So he, he held the... 30 something damn the 30 year old something <laughs> guy up to um and the guy was like he he basically was he basically become he basically became Johnny Cage cause he was talking like him and all that from you know the more recent games since in the old games I don't I think he had one line everybody had one line but whatever um we yeah cosplay is insane I'm trying to think of some more, uh, but it's just, you know, it, a lot of it is the typical stuff yeah. you see. It's just, it seems really fun, you know, you just get to be the character, you're going into a place where you have a lot of things with common people, and they all share interests, so it's just like, yeah. Um, there was this, at Power Morphicon, which, you know, it's for Power Rangers, there was this guy who had this insane Lord Zed costume, just, it, it literally looked like the costumes right off the show. Damn. It was that good. In the, it was homemade. Damn. I sw- like, the, the person who was doing interviews, he swore the guy bought the suit. But no, he talked about how the guy is in, me- the guy is in uh, makeup effects. Uh, he, um, actually, he actually works for, uh, 
he actually does special effects for shows on, on the Sci-Fi Channel. Um, and, you know, giant Power Rangers fanboy. He's just diehard in love with Power Rangers. So he, he made this costume, which took him two years to make. Um, and, of course, he talked about how uh, it's hot as all hell. Yeah. I feel bad for a lot of these people. Especially when you go to the convention in your little suits and it's summer and you're just like... Especially cookie. when they're in California. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think they have Power Morphicon every year in Los Angeles in June. I think yeah. it's, in, it's either May or June. So that it's has to suck. Sweltering. <laughs> Everyone smells. Oh, uh, it was because of how it was <laughs> after the uh, uh, air conditioning broke, too. Uh, that, that does happen. That is, I've uh, seen that happen at a couple conventions. Just be like... Uh, that would suck. He had, oh, by the way, what was even cooler, cooler is he had, you know, the tubes that Lord Zed would have. He actually had stuff going through the tubes. Oh, like, that's awesome. Like, he had this whole set up, like, just stuck to his back that was just pumping uh, fluid through the tubes. And, you know, he tried to do the voice, too. He tried to do the Lord Zed voice. You barely can hear him under that, under the whole, you know, the... Rub the rubber and the, the face plate and all that. Um, he had all the mannerisms down. He had all the physical movements down. Uh, he even did like this pose with guys who were dressed up as the Power Rangers. Keep them. Uh, it would have been better if it was like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but whatever. Um, now that guy, he was doing stuff for everybody that that convention. He. Like, everybody literally stopped him every 10 sec, almost every 10 seconds to get a picture with him. Yeah. I think that's also kind of sad that Comic-Con, I actually had to put up a thing, the New York Comic-Con, I had to put up a little post saying, do not harass the cosplayers that are human beings just like you. Do not, uh, you know, if they say no, no means no. Okay, I had to wait. literally put a sign up. In the front. Assault them? Uh, wait. Assault there them in some... sexual harassment. Oh, really? Oh, I can definitely see that. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, I must really fucking be, be shitty. You know, you know, you go in there to have fun, and all of a sudden you just get harassed by annoying people. It's, that's, like, do people not know how to act in public? Apparently not, because I was reading the thing on the, what was it? it, was on the hotel, and they were talking about a lot of, not, not cosplayers, but the convention people who usually go, you know, they leave a mess, or they'll sleep literally outside of the hotel, or like, in the uh, living area, yes, okay. and they even had people who were having sex, and it was just like, wow, seriously, well, you okay. people do not know how to act. This, okay, I wonder what pulled that, flip that switch. I don't know, but it was just it was on the whole whole thing of the convention. Oh my god! Of you know the conventioneers just they were having a lot of problems, and it was just a huge rant of you know shit they had to deal with, and they were not tolerating it. Uh, but anyway, well, well, pretty much, basically, um, that's one of the, this is, cosplayers is kind of one of the things I look forward to when it comes to conventions. So, you know, I, I watch footage from the big conventions every year. Conventions are about sitting in line, waiting for a long line. Waiting for, sh waiting to play shit, waiting to see shit, basically. Or an autograph. Uh, waiting to it. take a shit. Because there's always God, lines. I remember my sister sat there in line for two hours to get a, an autograph from, uh, fuck, I forgot what is, what's his name? Well, they grief, a grip from, uh, uh, Red uh, vs. Blue. From, yeah, Red vs. Blue. Yeah, um. I forgot his name. It wasn't Michael, was it? No. Okay. And yeah. he was, he was so exhausted. And I don't blame him, you know, he's in there signing autographs and he just like, Pointing out his little, because my sister had a grip picture, yeah. and he just did a little arrow to his crotch, like, me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame him, it's just like, dude, if I was exhausted, I'd do that too, and just be, you know, funny uh, to some of my fans. You should watch some of their uh, videos on YouTube where they talk, because uh, they, they got a lot of convention stories and stuff like that, and a lot of it is hilarious. Um, now, I, I actually will have to look up to see who would be at PAX this, uh, in, in January. Uh, I'm hoping guys like Angry, Angry Joe will be there because, you know, he lives here in Texas. Um, 
Uh, who knows? Maybe the Rooster Teeth people will be there. I, I doubt it, but maybe. They're maybe. Out, they're, they're from here in Texas. Um, he, so, I, like, with PAX, I can't wait for that. But, um, um, but with cosplayers, it just makes the conventions a lot more fun. Because it, it's, because it's, it's even, even if the costumes aren't that good, you can appreciate the effort that they went went into their costumes. Well, I mean, they just show off, you know, how much they love it. Yeah. And regardless, you know, how they have it. They I mean, just say, hey, I am a fan of this. I like to express. Uh, I have one, I have a friend who, uh, his plan was him and his girlfriend were going to be Mario and Princess Peach. But they got it in their head, and they thought this was going to be the most hilarious thing ever. Uh, if they switched costumes. So my friend was dressed up as Princess Peach, and he was getting, he, he, well, you know, the funny thing is they had to stop at a gas station, and he was in costume. Oh, <laughs> God. And, and he just, he was getting weird looks. I mean, this I, is why you have the costume off to the side for when you get to the convention. He, he, he wanted to get in that dress quickly. I don't, I don't go judge. Nah, um, uh, he talked about how that that was, how that was a lot of fun when he went there as Princess Peach, just because people were complimenting him, saying he makes a good Princess Peach, <laughs> and he loved it. He he loved it. He thought it was hilarious. Hey, if you're having fun, that's what it's all I about. Mean, the, the man has no shame. He'll do whatever he wants to get. He'll do whatever he can do to get reactions out of people, and most people were like, "Go." Cool. Because there's a lot, lot of men who dress up as female characters, and, you know, there's no... Well, I mean, if female people can dress up as male characters, then why can't male... You know, yeah, the whole I sexist mean, argument. Well, a lot of people just assume, oh, a cross dress. No, maybe they just want to be that, that particular character. Maybe they really like that character. Yeah, it's a gender Now, there's, there's certain costumes you can't pull off, like, uh, what, what was it? Z Zero Suit Samus? I think that's what it was called, the skin-tight suit. Oh. I think it was called yeah. the Zero Suit. Mm -hmm. But then again, there's people who wear like the battle armor, and well, more often than not, the people in battle armor are men. Um, there have been a few women who who don the battle armor for cosplay. Um, no, I showed you a video. Remember that video I showed you, which was a parody of. Uh, Oh god, I can't remember what it was, what the movie it was satirizing, but um, it was with the nostalgia critic in Eagle Raptor. Um, he just even in like a little convention like that, there was a there was some insane costumes. Like he caught some of them uh, in the background, um, and honestly, I don't know how you notice all the costumes in the background with uh, those two running around like maniacs. Uh, well, one being a maniac, the other one being an asshole, we both still. Um, guess which one I'm meaning by asshole. Never mind. Um, moving on. Uh, that's basically it for cosplay. I really don't got anything else. Yeah, I'm out too. Uh, you guys got anything? Not it, really. Not about, it, not about cosplay, but anything to add to hobbies? I think we might be coming to a conclusion. Yeah. I think we'll go into reason why you know we do this. Okay. Like. It's because this, cause this is itself a hobby. is a hobby. Yeah. It's another hobby that we share since we do the show. Uh. I mostly do it out of. I don't know. I want to. I'm not really sure why why I wanted to do this in the first place. I think I just wanted, like, mostly something to do, something to focus on. Um, not really sure why I wanted to start start a podcast. Um, and if you remember, my original idea was not a podcast. I uh, kind of fell into that. Um, but I think it was more that, I don't know, I think there's so many interesting things to talk about, and it'd just be cool to uh, kind of record it. So other people can hear, hear some of the interesting conversations that, that kind of come out of this place. Um, that's pretty much all I got. 
Well, the whole reason I actually honestly did this well because of the side fact that it's a Sunday and you, what are you going to do on Sundays? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's not much but to do. It's actually, it's really fun and enjoyable to really do this and actually, you know, hang out with people, talk about things, talk about things that we find interesting, what we have in common. And, you know, it's good to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, now, I don't know why most people do podcasts, I think. The majority of people I've noticed who make podcasts, they have other things they do. The podcast is usually a side thing. Like, uh, I listen to the t Super Tool shit, which is done by uh, Bennett White and Mark... I can't remember his last name. But Bennett the Sage and Mark the Engineer do this podcast when, on the side from doing their main show, Anime Abandoned. Um, it's more of like a side project for them, and it's just really get out their thoughts on particular subjects, and that might have been another reason why I wanted to do this, is because I usually have thoughts about stuff that comes out, like movie trailers yeah. or new games. Like, or, usually when you have something stuck in your head and you want to express it out and say it, because the more you know you hold your opinion in, the more it gets complicated and the more it just eats at you. Yeah. You guys get anything that add, Robert? It's more just for having fun, like... Like I said, there's nothing really to do on Sundays most of the time, so just come here, come have a conversation, voice my opinion, and, you know, see what other people think about it. And it's mainly just fun and, to do. And I, I'm sorry that you didn't really get to say a whole lot, but, uh, like, how much, like, is there anything you really want to add? No, except I just found out why y'all podcast every Sunday. <laughs> um, is this something you'll probably come back for? Maybe if y'all let, let me and invite me. Okay. If, yeah, there's, there's, there's we any do it room, every Sunday. Every, any You're invitation. welcome to just you know, join. So long as you're not a weirdo, creep, or say something, you know, completely crazy, then yeah, always welcome. <laughs> All right. How did you guess? Uh, the... Now there's one last thing I wanted to say, and this has this has nothing to do with hobbies. This is just something that, and I really one of the things I don't want to do on the show a lot is rant because there's enough of that shit on YouTube. There's enough of ranting. I mean, as much as as much as you might want to say that there's a, there's a lot of ranting, it's just it helps people voice their opinion, express themselves, and like I said before, not to have it build up. Um, so I'm going to try to get this out of my system. This is just something that has got stuck in my crawl yesterday and it's just because of it's just because of this whole notion of what a true fan is this really got under my skin because okay um i know you get, i know you guys aren't dragon you two aren't dragon ball z fans i know that but well geez ask michael at least no i'm not dragon ball z there figured, you gotta <laughs> you gotta make it clear okay i figured he <laughs> really wasn't but um I'm like I've said before. I'm a big Dragon Ball Z fan. I am still trying to find a way to watch the new Dragon Ball Z movie that came out re uh, a couple months ago, uh, Battle of the Gods. Everybody tells me it's a great movie. I I'll I'll judge it out when I see it myself. I was watching a few clips from it though, and I noticed there was one comment where some, this person was. Now he thought the movie was shit. You know, he's entitled to his opinion. If but his. One of his arguments was, um, it, you would hate this movie if you were a true fan since the 90s. Like, he went on this long rant. That was one of his, his bullet points was, I've been a fan since the 90s, and, you know, I'm a true fan and all that. And you're, but everybody here's a bunch of posers and stuff like that. What? And it just got under my skin. It was like, so, you're a true fan because you've been watching it since it started. So that so sounds like a hipster to me. He, it's like he's That's climbing the, the ultimate definition of hipster. He's climbing that he's been in <coughs> since the beginning. You know, if he has, if he has, cool. There's not, but he feels compelled to get territorial about it. Maybe. Like he has to complain about newer fans who, if, according to him, if you're if you got into it late, you're not a true fan. And this is what I sent him a message, and this is basically what I, and this is basically what I said. It's this. So, I didn't get into gorillas until 2005, 2006. 
Uh, so am I not a true fan because I haven't been listening to them since 2001? Since I didn't hear their first album when it came out, does that make me less of a fan? According to him, yeah. Apparently I'm not a true fan because I didn't listen to it since the beginning. It's okay. like... I, I, Okay, it's like... Am I not a true South Park fan because I didn't get into South Park until 2009? It's a very flawed argument, honestly. And, you know, usually what usually what makes a fan a fan, and I don't think they're truly something that's a true fan. I think you're just a fan of something and not a fan of something. Yeah, it's, but it's just this idea that this guy felt like he had to get he had to become territorial about it, where he basically saying and everybody, everybody like basically was saying this. If you don't, if you like this movie, you're not a true fan, and it's just like. People, I, I also said this to them, if, okay, if people truly love it, they're not a true fan because they didn't watch it since the beginning, no matter how much they love it, I'm just saying you can be as, you can be as much of a fan as you want to be, no matter when you started watching yeah. it, no matter when you get into something, you can still be a true fan of it. This whole concept of, you have to be watching it from the beginning to be a f true fan, it just, it just got under my skin. It's a horrible mind concept, and I don't see honestly why you would bash new people for getting the same interest that you're interested in. And the, the whole idea is, well, they're not into it as much as I am. It's like if I, it's like people, and right, I said I was a Star Wars fan. I'm not like a mega fan. I don't know all the little details and all that. Uh, some people might call say I'm not a true fan because I didn't know what an Ewok was. Like, I couldn't remember the, the name Ewok. Uh, I can't remember what the name of the planet that... I can't remember the name of the planet Empire Strikes Back starts on. Seriously, I, I have no idea what the ice planet is I called. wouldn't know either. But, um, Me either. Apparently, I'm not a fan. I'm not a true fan because I don't know that. It, you know, it, it's so frustrating with some people. It, it's like, can't you just be happy that there's even people who share the same interest as you? Yeah, um, it's like this one guy who tried to claim that, oh, if you got into anime just because of Attack on Titan, you're not a true anime fan. Hey, every <coughs> everything is somebody's first. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I guess that argument would work when Pokemon was popular. That's how I got into anime. Pokemon. So I guess I'm not a true fan of anime then. That's how I got into it. Yeah, it's just so You want to state stupid. what's popular. It's just, it's the gateway to it. It doesn't mean if you're a true fan or not. It's yeah. just what you, gets you into it, gets you into it. Like, uh, it's like, you got into, uh, you got into magic through Yu-Gi-Oh. Um. I didn't play it through the start. I guess I'm not a true fan, even though I spent thousands of dollars on it. <laughs> I got a tournament and I'm not a shit. true fan. It's. It's just something that really got under my skin, and I just kind of wanted to get that out. And again, the guy's entitled to his opinion. It's just—he's making an ass of himself. Basically, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. What an ass, yeah. All right, that's pretty much it for this episode. All I'm right. Philip, John, Rob, and our special guest, Michael. We'll see you next week.